Um, so, oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> so, sorry for the small technical difficulties that we had. The rest of me is freezing, but my palms are sweating because of that right now, I think. Um, so, my name is Kirtana. I'm from India. For all those of you who was here yesterday evening, I think, uh, I had given a shout out. So, maybe you have met me then. But if not, I'm here to talk about my home country and my home state. And uh, Karen just left us a little bit disappointed about how companies may or may not be doing it for profit, I think. It's a bit of a downer. So hopefully my story will cheer you up because it, I'm speaking about how my state has the entire legislative and, and the government has shifted to open source. So I'll come to that. And um, so I'll start off uh, with India. So I hope everybody knows where India is. We are a <laughs> South Asian region. It's huge, colors, Taj Mahal, everything that you can associate with India. I've written in the first slide. So the population of India currently stands at about 1.2 billion. And um, it's a very small place, and everybody's jam-packed in there. So that has its own difficulties and situations that we have to overcome. Um, and technology is one of those things that is connecting India right now. So I'll give you a really fascinating statistics. Um, so why India technology is gaining ground in India is because if you look at other countries which with high levels of population, obviously China is first, but they have a higher level of technology penetration into the population. They have it about 70%, I think, and USA has more than 90%. So India is it seems to be or South Asia, I should say, uh, with India and her nearby neighbors, Pakistan, uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, we all come together in the same subset. So the, the penetration there is like 40% or so. There are lots, large swaths of people still left unconnected into the internet. So that is a huge frontier that, that, that technology or tech companies would like to tap into. So <laughs> the funny thing is, only 30% of people in India have access to basic sanitation, but we have half a million, uh, half a billion for cell phone connections. So that is, technology has penetrated more than sanitation in India. So that is the level of technology that we are looking at. And this is only half of India. So the rest of India, and when the rest of Pakistan and people come in, we have almost a billion people getting connected in the next few years. That is the amount of network and the, the, the scale of magnitude that we are looking at. So human resources. So another thing that India will have is the human resource. Uh, almost a large part of our population is below 35 years of age, and almost everybody wa has a mobile phone. <laughs> okay, So everybody knows their WhatsApp and their Facebook, and everybody is getting connected to that. So if we can get that population to be interested, or at least one percentage of that billion to be interested in open source software, that will be a great boost, I believe. So that's a powerful incentive. And that is why we have. Uh, in the last six months alone, we have a lot of high-profile tech people visiting. We had Tim Cook about last month. Mark Zuckerberg came there to push his free basics. It did not work. We voted him out. So <laughs> we, we, all of us spammed the Ministry of uh, Telecom. We told him we do not want free basics. No, we want free internet, not free basics. So that, there's a huge swath of underutilized technical talent just waiting there because of the population. And that is a place that we can really tap into. So this is India. And I'll come. And I'll be mainly talking about my state. My state is the small little thing at the end. Here is where I'm from. It's small like me. <laughs> so that is Kerala. And I'm a Malayali. So this is Kerala. And I'm from Ernakulam. It looks medium sized in this map, I suppose. but Arunachalam is the largest district in Kerala, and it's also the most developed. It's the urban center of uh, Kerala. So a bit about Kerala. It, uh, where I'm from the land of coconuts. It, the name translates to the land of coconuts. And inside that little slice of land, we have about 3.5 crore, that is 35 million people living there. So that's a high density of population. And in Kerala is one of the most developed states in India. We have a very good GDP. Uh, we have the highest literacy rate. It's almost 100% primary education. So a lot of people in Kerala have access to technology. And that is why I think the origins of FOSS in India has started with Kerala. 
Kerala, I think, is the first state in the world to have a pro-open source policy. It started in 2001. We had a huge conference. Richard Stallman came. Uh, I don't know about 2001. I was maybe six then. Uh, so I remember 2008 when the, there was a huge conference, and 2010 or something, he came, and I saw posters over there. And my mother was trying to explain who this person was. And all I noticed was, he's a guy, but he has long hair. <laughs> That's all I noticed. <laughs> I was a kid. <laughs> so, um, so all these huge conferences were held in 2001, 2008, and 2011. There was a 10-year anniversary of the first one in 2001. And ICFAS, ICFAS is the International Center for Free and Open Source Software. It was, a, it was an institution created by the government of Kerala. And I think it was the first of its kind to promote uh, a free open source software by a government. So that was created in 2009. I'm a student ambassador from ICFAS. So I have this really cool job of um, meeting people in Kerala, in and around Kerala, and um, trying to tell them about open source software. Some of them were like, are you crazy? We have Google, we have everything. <laughs> and some people were interested. And so I'm the student ambassador from my district of Vernaculum. Um, so this is just a screenshot of the front page. I see first, um, we have a lot of activities happening like every two to three months. We have this workshop for people. Um, <coughs> So anybody can attend. It's usually it's free to have for all the people to attend, and um, yeah. So one thing that led uh, that happened because of ICFAS is ITH School. So ITH School is the state board, the Kerala government board. It introduced a lot of technology into its curriculum. So we have like people in the tenth grade. Tenth grade would be um, fifteen year olds who are starting to learn Python, who are starting to learn what FOSS is and what technology is. So that's a huge leap. And the empowering thing about the state board is that um, there's an international board where all the rich kids go to, the CBSC, the central government board, that the middle class goes to. A state board is usually lower income people, or people that uh, they, want, they want to go to CBSC, but they can't afford it. So that's why they used to go to state. But these days, the its quality of education in state is so high that people in CBSC, they don't know what C is. But people in the state board, they can program in Python already. So the technology is really good. They've pushed it, pushed it really well. And so Swatantra Malayalam Computing is the local powerhouse of computing that we have. Malayalam is my native tongue. So these guys, what they do is they code everything in, the na in our native tongue. That is why Malayalam is so, I think Malayalam is one of the strongest uh, sub wikis in Wikipedia because these guys, they push, they translate everything into Malayalam. They, they, they're really Malayalam centric people, very religious zealots of the language. Uh, I'm not really that good. So, and because of SMC, uh, uh, I'll come back to Startup Village later. So because of that, our legislator, the entire legislative body of Kerala, which services almost 35 million people, it moved entirely into free open source software. It happened about 2014, I think. And there's a lot of interesting stuff about it, because it's the first administrative body in the world to move into free open software entirely. And the mainly what convinced them to move was that if you do it, it will be cheaper. OK, we are Indian. We are signing up for this. <laughs> so and Niyama Sabha is the legislative assembly. Niyama means law in Malayalam. So Niyama Sabha is what our assembly is called. And all the documentation is, which is for that is done in Malayalam. Malayalam is a complex index script. It is written in rounded vowels. So if you see SMC, the part over at the left top that is Malayalam. It's not, it, you can't write it in one single way like you write it in English. It, it has a lot of different sub ways to write it. It's, it's a bit complex. And uh, Malayalam is said to be one of the toughest languages to speak because uh, we have all these slang words coming in. And we have like urla. So a lot of people find it difficult to roll their tongue like that. Uh, and we have, these are the specifications of the the magnitude of the task that they managed. So 80 operators and 500 pages of text every day, all that is done in Malayalam, and it's all done in open source software. And everything. Uh, and then the government mandated 
at all the public sector undertakings, KCBR, electrical board, everything, those are all done in open source system. And uh, we have an Indic keyboard released, so everybody can who wants to use Malayalam in their keyboard when they want to type, they can use Malayalam. And uh, recently, some uh, these phones have also. So these things were released in 2013 or 14. So nowadays, almost all these languages are um, supported by Google and Android. This was then, and that was a significant milestone then. And our electricity board has moved to free source free open source software solutions and the building software. Urima is called Unity in Malayalam. And uh, Saris is Simplicity. That's the accounting software. Yeah. So, and now I'll come back to the startup village. So, we f they found out these guys are really good at policy planning and very interested in it. So, they found that the, a lot of the youth, um, uh, on an average, a lot of people pass out, but there are not enough jobs for everybody who passes out. So they created this thing called the Startup Village. Startup Village, what basically it does is that it uh, enables a student who has an idea for an entrepreneurship, so they support him. They give um, a part of the attendance. If you are working in Startup Village, uh, you'll get leniency in your attendance, you'll get leniency in your subject marks, and they encourage you. And then there are a lot of companies inside Startup Village, or people who are like just passed out, or people who have quit their jobs to come and start and all that, and the government gives them incentive, they give them tax cuts, and Startup Village was started in 2010, almost, I think last year or so, the central government has also started its version of the Startup Village, they are giving tax breaks to all these startups from the last budget onwards, but our government started it in 2010, so I'm really <laughs> proud to talk about this, and uh, I have, in my own class, I have classmates who have their startups incubated in it, I, I help out I have friends with startup uh, in Startup Village with whom I help out with content and front end development. And uh, so that's about Startup Village. Startup Village is a place, there's an actual physical place in, um, in Cochin where you can come and you can register, but it also uh, provides online incubators. So if you are in some other part of Kerala which is not accessible or if you want to live in your own hometown and you start something, then you can have that, an online version of this incubation and they give you online support. You have to have Wi-Fi sometimes since it's India, it doesn't work and all, but we adjust. <laughs> so that's what Startup Village is. And finally, E-District. So E-District, uh, I'm not sure of in exactly when this was implemented, but all our public service um, announcement and all that, everything has gone online and I believe it's all done in open source software as well. So if you want any documentation, your birth certificate, death certificate, marriage certificate, Aadhaar card, Aadhaar is a social security number. So if you want any of these uh, administrative documents or these official documents, if you want them for Kerala government, uh, everything is online, you can give your number and it's all very transparent. So you can ask that person and they have this 30 day policy, like if you don't get what you have asked for in 30 days, your government is held accountable. And so everything is online. And this is again, this is Malayalam. <laughs> for all those who didn't understand, this is Malayalam. This is how Malayalam is written. When you write it, uh, in, when printed Malayalam looks like this. Written Malayalam looks a whole lot worse. Sometimes even natives can't read it. <laughs> so uh, we have early scripts of Malayalam. Um, like uh, India is very ancient, so Malayalam has been, uh, uh, we have old scripts like Gita, Mahabharata that is written. So in early times, the, those there are they have uh, excavators have found um, instances where all those things that were written in Sanskrit, they were also written in a Dravidian script similar to ours. So they have all these research going into how we can connect, how uh, our, all our languages have evolved. Because in South India, uh, I'll go back to India right now. Yeah, so all these places in South India, these, these four guys, they have almost the same, that round script, but it has all evolved in different regions. So there is apparently a common ancestor for all these regions. And so the, all this data mining research is going on into how we can find it and all that. And Swatantra Malayalam Computing, is, uh, these guys are uh, pushing about how uh, Malayalam was the first thing and nobody believes that, but we are still trying to do it. Uh, so. And um, E-District is that uh, all the legislator, uh, all the papers, everything that a person might need 
for any of their uses. Everything is online. All your uh, grievances, if you want to talk to the government, it, those are all online. So that's basically it. I've, I've given you some references. The, all those sc screenshots you see, those are all live web pages. If you would like to uh, know any of the uh, um, websites, I can give them to you. So that's basically it. Um, hopefully, we are all a little bit happier that some good is happening in the world. So, thank you. I'll take questions if anybody has. Yes? Often in Africa, you'll find that um, in Nigeria or something like that, you'll find someone that has more than one telephone in their pocket. Uh -huh. um, is that the case also in India? Yeah, there are people with multiple connections, obviously, but the scale, not everybody can have. I mean, if three million, 300 million people have uh, and there are 500 connections, you can't assume that almost 200 people have double connections. No, some people who don't care about sanitation, they care about mobile phones. They want to have access to this Facebook and Google and all that. So that's what the numbers are talking about, I think. So it's a very glamorous thing in India if you have a mobile phone. So people want it more. Sanitation, it's a taboo subject. So nobody wants to talk about sanitation. But if everybody has a mobile phone which is streaming the latest movie, everybody wants that. So everybody wants an iPhone. <laughs> Please. Um, I know there are a lot of regulations around getting a, a SIM card and you've got to register for it and stuff. We've got something similar but not quite as bad here in South Africa. Has that affected uh, mobile penetration? being hard to get uh, some part and having to provide documentation? I think it has for a long time. But um, I think for the past couple of years, the, a lot of these restrictions have been relaxed. We are trying to make our economy more palatable to the outside world, bring in more foreign investment. So I think changes are happening right now so that people can get it easier done. So uh, hopefully more, till that gets so Any more questions? Over there. Hi, uh, I was just Hello. asking, uh, you know about Facebook's internet.org, and I was just wondering if it's penetrated to India and how much it has helped. I, I did not hear uh, Facebook's record. Internet.org, where Look. they provide free internet access to Facebook, I think. No, they, Mark Zuckerberg came about mm -hmm. three to four months ago to try push a free basics to you know, to glamorize it to Indians and tell them that we here we have free basics, mm -hmm. but we overwhelmingly we messaged the Ministry of Telecom and we told them that no free basics, we want um, free internet in the actual free sense, not something that Facebook is giving us. We want, we have our right to free internet and that's not what Facebook says it is. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, well, I think my question is somehow related to this. As, uh, well, you mentioned a lot that right, the, the, the internet connectivity is usually done, usually uh, got to people through cellular phones. Mm. Now, cellular phones are a great way to consume, but a, a very poor way to create. So how, yes, yes. how much does that translate to people having, besides their phone, which is a great tool to understand the world, a computer with which they can create things? I'll tell you the answer. That's a very significant question, because the problem with India is that uh, the urban population is well educated, but the rural population is not so well educated. So, and all these programming stuff, it's in especially in North India, it is probably in English, which they are very much unfamiliar with. But in a mobile phone, if you can, you don't need much to learn how to operate a mobile phone or how to access things in a mobile phone. And you, uh, I don't think they are in the mode of contributing yet. They are consuming YouTube. They are consuming local videos and all that. And so that has given them an interest in technology. So every Google, Facebook, those are household names in India. And knowing about technology and wanting to know more and explore technology is better than not having any technology at all, I believe. So I think change is happening. It is happening from the south to the north, I think. But it is, and in the next 10 years, hopefully, India itself will become a powerhouse of force. That's our aim. That's what we are working for. Any more questions? So 
So the question from IRC is, is there a mobile-free software imp implementation in India at the moment or some projects you'll be aware of? Okay, can you repeat the question? I didn't understand it, unfortunately. Sure. So the question was, uh -huh. is there a mobile-free software implementation or project that you know at the moment in India? Mobile-free. Um, I'm not sure about that exactly. Uh, there are probably, India is a very diverse place, so whatever you're searching for might probably exist because there are people from very different levels. I mean, there are people from just the top, very brilliant people to people who don't know nothing about communication. Like, we have those, that's the level that we are at, but uh, I'm not sure exactly what the user, the person who's talking about mentioning, uh, but probably it does exist. I'm not knowledgeable about it. Okay, so if there's no more questions, I think we should move on because the next talk will be in a few minutes. Thanks okay. again. Thank you so much. And uh, before uh, this ends, if my parents are watching, I think they are. A shout out. I hope I did well, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. You're a great audience.